Back at it again with the Mobius Stickus, Chapter 31, The Queen Mab. This is a pretty short chapter. I'm going to keep it nice and sweet. I just want to touch on two funny passages and then one, you know, somewhat interesting passage. Uh, the first is, such a queer dream, King Post, I never had. You know the old man's ivory leg? Well, I dreamed he kicked me with it, and when I tried to kick back upon my soul, my little man, I kicked my leg right off. And then presto, Ahab seemed a pyramid, and I, like a blazing fool, kept kicking at it. So I guess dreams are weird. I guess I could have gone yellow for this one and said, ooh, oh, how do we understand or know the truth of dreams? But eh, this seems like a bit of a stretch. I think it's just funny, the notion of a uh, stub kicking his leg off. And then, of course, it gets even funnier when we meet the merman, and it says, while I was battering away at the pyramid, a sort of badger-haired old merman with a hump on his back takes me by the shoulders and slews me round. What are you bout, says he slid man but i was frightened such a fizz which is a slang term for face but somehow next moment i was over the fright what am i about says i at last at what business is that of yours i should like to know mr humpback do you want a kick by the lord flask i had no sooner said that than he turned round his stern to me bent over and dragging up a lot of seaweed he had for a clout and what do you think i saw why thunder alive man his stern was stock full of marlin spikes with the points out which is a metal tool used by sailors to separate strands of rope or wire with apparently very pointy ends says i on second thought i guess i won't kick you old fellow so in stubb's dream this merman appears and he goes to kick him in the butt and his butt is somehow full of spikes uh anyone who says that this book is dry is not paying attention to the passage about dreaming about kicking a merman's butt but not doing it because your foot will get impaled Finally, in this chapter, I find this passage in orange interesting because it seems to account for a universal human tendency in terms of power and fame. Look ye here, says he, let's argue the insult. Captain Ahab kicked ye, didn't he? Yes, he did, says I. Right here it was. Very good, says he. He used his ivory leg, didn't he? Yes, he did, says I. Well then, says he, wise stub, what have you to complain of? Didn't he kick with right good will? It wasn't a common pitch pine leg he kicked you with, was it? No, you are kicked by a great man, and with a beautiful ivory leg, Stubb. It's an honor, I consider it an honor. Listen, wise Stubb. In old England, the greatest lords think it great glory to be slapped by a queen, and made garter knights of. But be your boast, Stubb, that ye were kicked by old Ahab and made a wise man of. Remember what I say. Be kicked by him, account his kicks honors, and on no account kick back. For you can't help yourself, wise Stubb. So for me, that's just such an interesting passage because even today in 2020 some people just like being associated with power dignity be damned why are there random hangers on for every rapper sports player famous person why are there people who just want to be part of an entourage to be metaphorically uh kicked with an ivory leg right i don't know but certainly some people would rather be associated with greatness yet have no dignity themselves then make it on their own and have to avoid the metaphorical kick of the ivory leg. Once again, an observation made about the world just kind of thrown out there by Melville and given to us to contemplate and think about. That's where I'm going to cut it off for chapter 31. Boy, do you have a doozy of a chapter coming up in chapter 32. It is the bane of everyone that tries to read Moby Dick, and I can't wait to talk about it. See you next time.